You make calls, pound the pavement, take orders. Nobody is seriously accusing any website or writer of accepting money from publishers in direct exchange for positive reviews. But the term paid reviews has gained such potent meaning not only to cynical gamers, but the reviewers themselves, that to say that there isn't at least something going wrong would only call further into question one's honesty, particularly when there is such an abysmal track record. Publishers see game reviewers as simply another front on the marketing campaign. While there is almost always a review score controversy in the gaming public's recent memory, the coercion is either impressively infrequent or operated tightly enough that very little slips into public awareness. The Kane and Lynch controversy is still spoken of to this day. Kane and Lynch Dead Men is an ugly, ugly game. That's not necessarily me talking just about the graphics. It's got uh, a really ugly storyline with characters that are impossible to like. And it's a third person shooter that has several gameplay flaws as well. But how many people are going to remember Driver 3? Tomb Raider. I found a truth. <laughs> and I knew what I must become. Halo 3. Bungie decided to create a game that would service both casual fans and their hardcore fans who have really become experts at Halo. And to that end, they've made normal and easy mode actually easier than they've ever been. Call of Duty. This is what your greed has brought you. Metal Gear Solid 4 and dozens of other embargoes. Information control. We have your review copy of Metal Gear Solid 4. Sign some standard non-disclosure agreement. Yeah, sure. It just says that you won't mention the install time, the length of the cutscenes, the quality of the cutscenes. Duke Nukem Forever, Battlefield 3, and bring them up in a single debate. What seems like a minor issue becomes more serious from a chronological perspective. These companies are repeat offenders, not because they have made a few mistaken and overambitious gambits, but because their tactics normally work. These few instances of aggressive advertisers getting caught are not signs that the woodwork of gaming journalism is strong and repellent. They're the mysterious white ants you squish now and again before your porch eventually caves in. If you give a game a negative review, its publisher is less likely to do business with you again. That's a pervasive fact that writers acknowledge before they even enter the industry. It means that free review copies, an important part of a balanced budget and vital to timely publication, will no longer get sent, and that advertising, the source of what meager pay these writers receive, will have to come from someone else. Even before the review is written, the website will be plastered with advertisements and previews, many of which are collaborations, contaminating the writer's perception of the game. Embargoes and early review copies also help ensure that the high numbers are established before negative reviews or word of mouth are even out of the gate. Large portions of the gaming community are also a toxic contributor to this problem. When a negative review of a highly hyped sequel is released on a large website, the comments are flooded with intellectually devoid anger. And while the initial traffic spike is not objectionable, there is a concern that readers will be lost over time. The stalwart defender of truth and justice would push on and plow determinedly through the snows of fan hatred, and he would gain a new readership, a discerning one, of high taste. But the question arises, does that readership even exist? 
The question is too much to handle. And meanwhile, somebody is sending death threats. As you know, Master Chief is pretty proficient with beating the crap out of people with his fist, but really he's a lot better with a gun. And there are a few cool weapons that have been added. You've got a flamethrower. Yes, finally Halo has a flamethrower. And it's got a really cool looking effect and guys will actually catch on fire. Video game reviews are typically devoid of criticism, and when the time comes for an actually negative review to be written, critics often find themselves at a loss for insightful ways of describing what they found objectionable. The function of large gaming websites is more akin to that of a consumer catalog than a place for analysis or reasoning. As long as there is a summary, a description of the game mechanics, and a number attached, it counts and two of those three things are made redundant by gameplay footage. Perhaps readers would read the reviews instead of scrolling down to the score if reviews weren't banal checklists. Ask a video game journalist and they will tell you that while they can't speak for everybody, they know that they are not biased. How do they know they're not biased? Introspect is famously flawed. And if they knew they were biased, would they tell us? The fact is that while writing the review for the next big game, the thought crossed their mind that a negative review for a game might seem dissonant when surrounded by banners telling readers to buy that very game. This sort of thinking is visible in the need of reviews to mention, almost without fail, how highly hyped a big release is. Halo 3 is the most highly anticipated video game of all time, and with good reason. Bungie Studios really raised the stakes with Halo 1 and Halo 2, and a lot of people have been wondering how they're going to fare on the next generation and whether or not they're going to be able to deliver on all of the promises they've made. If reviewers and gamers were able to take games at face value, advertisements might not be such a big issue. However, by the time a game is released, everybody has already formed their expectations. Publishers make sure of this by giving big-budgeted games premiere showings at large events like E3 and the Tokyo Game Show years before anybody gets their hands on them. And before normal gamers are able to play the games, journalists play them at kiosks, both on the noisy and inhibiting show floor and inside comfortable and custom decorated hotel rooms, always with an attendant standing nearby to give advice and explanations. How many times have you read a sentence similar to this one? The gaming press, always polite, refrains from asking difficult questions and makes sure to give everything a fair shake. Of you guys, because a lot of times these, the, a lot of the reviews, you guys get caught up in the hype a lot of times, and the excuse drives me batty. The excuse is, well, we love games and we're fans too. And I, what I said today to Jeff, I'm like, fuck you. You're paid. You get paid by the advertisers. You get paid by actual salary. You don't get to be a fan. You get you are a journalist first. And so I'm, I appreciate that your hype for title X Y Z that the PR company has gotten you excited about, or that the graphics have gotten you excited about, but. Is that any reason to not put sort of your critical hat on when it's time to review it? It's like so many things get tens, so many things get nines, and I don't want to kind of, I was saying today. Difficult questions lurk around every corner of this issue. Questions like, if a reviewer can get a game for free ahead of its release, why is the average gamer accused of breaking the law when he does the same thing? It's an endless series of proxy battles. Indeed. After getting the game for free, under what pretense do reviewers assign scores based on lasting value and bang for your buck? And could the most wary gamers be accidentally blinded to much of these shady dealings by their own ad blocker, thus making an opening for even more blatant bias? It's no longer about nations, ideologies, or ethnicity. Due to viral marketing, how can you trust word of mouth? ID tag soldiers carry ID tag weapons, use ID tag gear. What can be done? Can it be done? Almost none of the methods by which publishers buy out the gaming press are illegal. Besides honesty, what is being lost? The masses get to enjoy bad games, the companies get rich, and the writers make a wage. In spite of the posturing of Fox News, legislators could hardly be upset to see the jingoistic modern warfare games topping sales charts. As always, what seems like a loss 
for artistic and journalistic integrity is a win for everyone in charge. The age of deterrence has become the age of control. All in the name of averting catastrophe from weapons of mass destruction. And he who controls the battlefield controls history. More has changed when the battlefield is under total control. War becomes routine. No. Ah! 